right, we're going to look at an example here uh, for two vectors, and we're supposed to determine some values for this unknown a, which shows up in both of our vectors here, uh, to determine whether these two vectors could be parallel, perpendicular, or maybe that's impossible. All right, so there are several ways to think about this and do this. I'm going to do this using uh, some properties of vectors that we've already talked about, but there are other ways to think about these and do these as well. All right, so I'm going to start with the parallel here. Uh, and if we think about two vectors being parallel, the main idea there is that they would be going in the same direction or perhaps in exact opposite directions, and they would still be parallel to each other. So although there are several ways to do that calculation, probably the easiest is to think about if two vectors are parallel, let's look at that part of the example here, the two vectors would have to be scalar multiples of each other. So I'm just going to set up an equation uh, that describes those two vectors being scalar multiples of each other. All right, so my vector v here, a, 2, 1, would have to be a scalar multiple of this vector w. I'm just going to use c for an unknown scalar here. Okay, so that would be true, this equation would be true if the two vectors are parallel. And um, so in order to simplify that, maybe we want to think about in terms of the individual components. So in the first component of each vector here, if this equation is true, then my first components here and here are going to have to be equal to each other. So I would have a equals negative 2c. And then the second components for this vector and this vector would have to be equal to each other. So I would have 2 equals 1 times c, so c. And then the third component, I would have 1 equals, and then over here, I would have a c. So I've just set the components equal to each other. What I have here is a system of three equations and two unknowns. Uh, so I need to solve that system and think about whether that system actually has a solution. In this particular problem, the uh, second equation here just gives us a value for c. So once I have that, I could plug that in either place and figure out a corresponding value for a. Uh, so if c equals 2, then this first equation says that a has to equal negative 2 times 2. So negative 4. All right, so the second equation gave me c equals 2. The first equation then gave me a equals 4. Uh, in order for this system to be true, I would have to check that those two values also work in the third equation. You'll notice that they don't. So 2 times negative 4, a times c is not 1. So these don't check. 1 is not equal to negative 4 times 2. So those don't check. So in this case, this particular part of the problem is not possible. All right, let's go on to the second part of the problem here and think about if these two vectors were going to be perpendicular to each other, how I might think about finding a possible value or show that it's impossible that the two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So again, I'm going to use an equation uh, to think about this. So perpendicular vectors, uh, that should make you think about dot products. Uh, one of the things we talked about with dot products is that two vectors are said to be orthogonal if their dot product is zero and that there are three ways that can happen if that dot product is zero. One of them is that one of the vectors is the zero vector. The second way is that the other vector is the zero vector. The third way is if they are perpendicular to each other. So the idea for the perpendicular vectors would be to leverage that. These are, neither of these are the zero vector because you have components that are not zero. But I can use the dot product being equal to zero as an equation and use that to figure out if there are some values that make the equation true. All right, so I'm going to write, just write down the dot product, a21 dot, my w vector, negative 2, 1, a, and I want that dot product to equal zero. So if there is a possible value for a that makes these two vectors perpendicular, then this equation has to be true. So on the left side here, I'm just going to go ahead and do that dot product. So I'll have a times negative 2, or negative 2a, plus 2 times 1. 
plus 1 times a, and that's going to have to equal 0. And here I just have one equation, one unknown, so I can just solve that. I get, uh, if I simplify the left side here, I get 2 minus a equals 0, equals 0, not a, 0, equals 0. And so uh, when I solve that for a, I get 2 equals a. All right, so a equals 2 would make these two vectors perpendicular to each other. Again, there are other ways to do these problems, but these are probably the most straightforward way to do problems like this. Uh, and you can leverage this for other kinds of situations where you want the vectors to have some particular geometric relationship.